Good morning. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. These all look to you. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created.
by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
third day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Let him come to me and drink. 
The first phenomenal claim that Jesus made about himself is that he is the source of life. Human beings get thirsty. We thirst for physical water as well as for the spiritual kind. Jesus has both because Jesus is both. Only Jesus is the source of cleansing and purification. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace. He can refresh you. This is rest. Give rest to the weary, and this is repose. And he can revitalize and re-energize you. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ is the source of abundant life. Now we've been speaking these many weeks about the trials and tribulations that is the Christian life, a life that is filled with suffering. We saw that Jesus nowhere promised that you would have wealth and comfortable living, but he did teach us that an abundant life is a life lived in service to others. The rivers of living water that flow from Christ will carry you on to an abundance of life lived by his sacrificial example. The source of the living water is right there at the foot of the cross. And upon it, all of your sins were drowned in that living water. The same washing of regeneration that was placed on you in your baptism. Today we celebrate that very water as we gather at the Lord's table. Because that is where Christ comes to fill you with every abundant blessing. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they should be satisfied. The living water comes only through faith in Christ, that he died so that your sins would be washed away. And despite it not really being the Lord's table right now, or even the Lord's rail, the sacrament remains. Even though we don't receive it in the manner we are used to, the efficacy of the body and blood of Christ remains. And we are blessed to be able to partake of it. Jesus Christ is the source of the Holy Spirit. On this day of Pentecost, we give thanks and praise to God for sending his Holy Spirit into us, distributed through the means of grace instituted by Christ, his word, and his holy sacraments. Through simple washing and simple food, the Holy Spirit enters us and begins to work a truly remarkable change. And the change is often quite sudden. On that first Pentecost, the God-fearing Jews in Jerusalem took in the spectacle of this rapid transformation, and they were bewildered. This astonishment can be read as a literal pouring inward of events, which is a beautiful parallel to the pouring outward of the Spirit upon those present. We, like those Jews of long ago, turn inward in our fear and our confusion. And then the Lord pours forth peace, faith, and hope upon us. The gift of the Holy Spirit is living water. From those navel-gazing sinners in Jerusalem flow the beginnings of the church by the power of that poured out Holy Spirit. And that river has surged to the ends of the earth and across time to you sitting here right now. The Holy Spirit has been present from eternity, yet he was not only given until Christ completed his work. Now the Holy Spirit is made fully manifest in the lives of believers. Sinners always underestimate their need for Christ. At the hands of sinners, the Lord's mission goes unfulfilled. Thanks be to God for his continual pouring out of the Holy Spirit into the lives of us sinners, that we may see the need to repent for our many sins, and that we may now have the gift of faith. We need not fear Christ's return in judgment because he paid for our debts with his death. We can anticipate Christ's return in peace. So now let's return to what we said in the beginning. A river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. A river rushes along and flows over places that the source of that river cannot know about. With the outpouring of the Spirit, we go on a journey upon this ever-flowing river of living water, 
receiving blessings and reaching places downstream where the gospel may never have been heard. And it doesn't have to be a long-out foreign country. It could be your next-door neighbor. Obstacles in a river's path may be passed on to the side or over or even under. Given enough time, the river can even go through them. The Holy Spirit's work is no different. That's a remarkable thought to consider. God rarely lets us know when or to whom we may have been a blessing. The visible effects may be minuscule. Our outward acts may be seemingly insignificant to us, but the Holy Spirit can work powerful transformations, and we, we have seen that in our own lives. We have nothing to do with these downstream blessings to our neighbors that are as yet unmet. Yet the miracle of faith is worked through us regardless. When you travel on a river, you may know where you have been, and you may know where you are going, but you cannot see where the river begins and where the river ends. You simply make the use of the river, make use of the river's power to make progress, and hopefully, you have an abundant and joyful trip while you do so. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. And without the life, there is no living. Many did not know what to make of Jesus. They questioned where he came from. They questioned by whose authority he was teaching. They saw a great man, yes, even a prophet, but that is all. Likewise, the crowds gathered in Jerusalem that Pentecost did not know what to make of Christ's disciples, standing and preaching about the forgiveness of sins fluently in their own languages. On both occasions, a large number simply went home in unbelief, their lives unimpacted. But for those on whom the Holy Spirit is poured, God grace, God's grace abounded. John Newton, the author of the hymn Amazing Grace, put it this way. I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I would like to be. I am not what I hope to be. But I am not what I once was. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. Healed by the Holy Spirit, we are not what we once were. Fortified in the Lord's table, our strength, our faith is strengthened. Our nagging unbelief is crushed into dust. Ever changing and ever growing in the Spirit, we are carried down the river, living an abundant life of service, in thanks for this gift of the Holy Spirit, which is sealed in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Almighty God, help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way but walks on the path of eternal life. Almighty God, take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Almighty God, bless all elected and appointed civil servants, that the rule of law may protect the weak, preserve life from conception to its natural end, and peace may reign for the benefit of us all. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us, put an end to the pandemic, and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Almighty God, bless newly planted congregations that they may endure. Guide established congregations that they may not lose heart. And build up our synod that our zeal for your kingdom may not lack, but flourish and prosper according to your will. Almighty God, deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn, especially those we now need in our hearts. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, you have given us your own Son as our Savior and Redeemer. He has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies, that we might be fed upon the body of Christ and drink his blood. Guard the unity of this table, that we would confess him with one voice, and receive this blessed sacrament with one faith, and hear our prayers for all whom gathering has been made difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death, and who lives to call to himself all who will be saved. You know what we need and those things we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Lord,
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith now into eternal life, departing joy and peace. and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 